Welcome to Bootstrap, insights for the self-funded entrepreneur with Frank Chinchilli. My name is Matthew Lay, and as always, I will be your host. Today marks the start of season two of Bootstrap. That's right, we're back. We had a lot of really positive feedback and a lot of questions from all you entrepreneurs who have been watching. Some of the key questions we hope to answer this year is more of a dive into the finance side of being a bootstrap operation, as well as giving a little more color, some stories about Frank's last 15 years in business that informed some of the ideas we shared with you last year. All right, that out of the way, let's get started. Frank, thanks, uh, thanks for uh, having me back for Bootstrap. Well, it's great to be back. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we did get some great feedback. What, what's, what are the things that you heard after we released the series last year? Well, I heard a lot of positive feedback, and um, what was was most reassuring and exciting uh, was the uh, the varying you know uh, people from all different types of uh, backgrounds yeah. that gave me some feedback. Whether it was you know an entrepreneur who was just kind of get, getting off the ground, or someone who was scaling their business very quickly, to very large business owners, yeah. got some value out of it. We even got some from employees at other companies. We did, yeah. Uh, and or you know, I'd be interviewing a candidate for a role. I wish we yeah. could say, oh, I, you know, I caught those 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 videos, and it was really I you know I shared it with my spouse or my friend yeah. or my you know, gentleman who owns a business. So, um, yeah, it was it was. It was great to, to hear that people were getting value because that's the whole point. We were, yeah. we're hoping someone gets value out of these. Exactly. Um, you know, the one thing that I heard, I mean, we talked. To, I talked to um, our PR guys and they were talking about how this really is unique. There's a lot of talk about entrepreneurialism in this country right now, but the idea of how to do it bootstrap was, uh, was something that they had not, not really seen. Yeah, and I, think, and I think we mentioned it in one of the episodes yeah. uh, early in season one was that you know, there's there's no shortage of experts or uh, reading material uh, on, on the internet uh, about tech startups yeah. or uh, some of these exciting cryptocurrencies and AI. Yeah. Um, but for most business owners, I would say 90, 95 percent of them, you know, they're out there bootstrapping it. They're, yeah. they're you know, they've got some similar challenges of uh, cash flow and how to manage and find good people and how to get generate yeah. more sales. They're not out there doing multiple rounds of finance. So. Right. Um, it's not as sexy, yeah. but it's very relevant. So, exactly. So I'm glad that, you know, I'm, I'm obviously glad that uh, people see value in that. Well, the other big, big feedback that I got personally was on just how bright and maybe awful my socks were last year. So I've tried to tone them down um, for this season. Now, um, let's get started with a, a bit of a broad question is there is a lot of talk about entrepreneurialism in Canada. What do you think is the state of affairs? Is it a good time to start a business in this country? Well, I'll say that it's never been better. Okay. Um, you know, I still feel that um, Canadian entrepreneurs are frustrated with yep. the lack of uh, lack of governmental support. Not only government support, but you know, from banks. Everyone complains about the banks, yeah. and generally, in the investor appetite in, yeah. in early stage companies yeah. uh, isn't quite where you know we need it to be. Okay. Uh, at least compared to the U.S. Okay. Where there's uh, lots of capital. Um, but it's improving. Okay, so it's improving. The government is sort of getting on board. We, I mean, we have heard some, I guess, some moves they've been making that are going to affect small business mm -hmm. that seem anti-employer. But you feel like they they are backing the entrepreneur, or they're, or they're ready to get involved, maybe. Uh, you know, I don't want to get into my uh, to my opinion on the government. Okay. I, I, I really think there's a lot of uh, room for improvement there. But what I am seeing improvements, which I'm happy to see, is in the in the venture capitalist community. Okay. Still very small compared to the U.S., but growing. Yeah. Um, we are now starting to see uh, many more um, entrepreneurs that have successfully scaled and right. exited their businesses that are turning to uh, mentorship and uh, let's call it be, becoming venture capitalists themselves. Which right. that's. That was the trend that began 20, 30 years ago in, in Silicon Valley, okay. and that's what's made that such a hotbed. Right. Um, there's been some formalization of this as well, like incubators. Um, I'm not sure if Mars counts. I think there's some government involvement yeah, Mars there. Yeah, Mars is a good one as well. But yeah. there's, there, there is more of that Silicon Valley type, you know, shared spaces or whatever they might be. Yes, and, um, and that's also very encouraging because I think with, with Silicon Valley, you know, Obviously, there's so many venture capitalists right. in Silicon Valley, but they're not money guys. They're not bankers. They, these are these are gentlemen that have, um, you know, sold their businesses for billions of dollars. Right. So you're not just getting money. You're getting uh, access to their, you know, to their contacts. Yeah. Uh, they're obviously brilliant guys that have done it before themselves, yep. and they're entrepreneurs at heart. That's right. in their that's in their DNA. So when you get funded uh, in the valley. Uh, from uh, from a from a from a venture group that they've all been on boards of these great startups that they invested early in the companies yeah. like Google, 
um, your odds of success go way up. Right. In Canada, historically, it hasn't been there. Even if you are accessing early stage capital, it's maybe friends and family that yeah. don't <laughs> don't really know anything about business. They yeah. just want to support you. Exactly. Um, where so now we're getting these entrepreneurs, and they're also packaging it up in some great programs. Uh, Co-founders Lab uh, comes to mind. Creative Destruction Lab comes to mind because you're basically getting a brain trust there. So you're yeah. getting access to capital, but they're also putting you through a boot camp and coaching you and helping you how to scale your business beyond just providing some office space, which is also valuable. Right. Yeah. And that's not, I mean, that's not dissimilar to the Wish Group. I mean, you're not just putting seed money in, but you're helping young entrepreneurs basically get their businesses off the ground. Exactly. So, you know, obviously at Wish Group, we've done uh, very well at uh, starting up companies and scaling them very quickly. Yeah. And so we provide a, a nice infrastructure for you to do that from whether it's finance, marketing, IT, yeah. and most importantly, access to our, to our clients and our, our brilliant leaders such as yourself. Because iron does sharpen iron, yeah. and it's always better for a young entrepreneur um, as they are out there embarking on their entrepreneurial journey to, to be able to mentor and speak with someone who's already walked through the minefield. Yeah. And as a, as a young entrepreneur, I've said it many times on this, sh on this show and el el elsewhere, um, couldn't have done it without that, just like most people can't do it without some sort of funding. And that was a big question that you guys had. So what we're gonna do on the next episode of Bootstrap in season two is we're gonna dive in on funding. We're gonna hear from Frank and learn how he funded his first business and some do's and don'ts of funding a Bootstrap startup. That's all the time that we have today, so um, make sure that you comment, let us know what you think, any questions that uh, came, came to your mind, we'll be answering those, as well as share this with your friends, family, or loved ones, and keep it lean.